more practice with the future tense. For more information, you can look in your textbook at chart 4-3 on page 67 or at chart 4-4 on page 69. First, let's talk about time clauses. In general, in English, when you're using a time clause, you use the simple present. In the main clause of the sentence, you use the future tense. Time clauses are dependent clauses in a sentence that indicate time. They have some sort of time word, like when, before, after, until, by the time, and all of these indicate time. Even though they're describing events that happen in the future, because of the time word, we don't need to use the future tense, so we simply use the simple present. For instance, when my sister arrives, we will go to the restaurant. The time clause is when my sister arrives. Now, of course, my sister hasn't arrived yet. This event is in the future. But because of the word when, we know that it's in the future and it hasn't happened yet. So we use the simple present. Notice in the main clause, however, that we use the future tense. We will go to the restaurant. The next sentence, I will find a job before I graduate. The time clause is before I graduate. Of course, this event is in the future. I haven't graduated yet. But because of the word before, we understand that graduation is in the future, so we don't need the future tense, so we use the simple present. In the main clause, we do use the future tense. I will find a job. It is also possible to use present progressive and present perfect in time clauses. Most of the time, you use simple present, but there are a few exceptions to that rule. For instance, while I'm visiting my cousins in New York, I will look for a job. When you see the word while, we usually use a progressive tense because it indicates something that is in progress. When an event is in progress in the future, we use present progressive. In the main clause, however, we use the simple future. Present perfect can also be used, for instance, in the following sentence. I will start my job after I have finished school. You could also say, I will start my job after I finish school. There is no difference in meaning. Both sentences are correct. It would probably be a little more common in English to say the second sentence, I will start my job after I finish school. But you might say, after I have finished school. The idea is that finishing school will be completed in the future. At some point in the future, that will be completely done and finished. That's the only extra meaning that it adds. That when I do finally start my job, school will definitely be finished, it will be over. It gives that kind of extra certainty that definitely this event will be finished in the future. You don't have to use it, but we do sometimes in English. You can also use the present progressive and the simple present in main clauses to describe an event in the future. This is very common, actually. For instance, with the present progressive, this can describe events that will happen in the future that are planned and definite. Oftentimes, you can use the present progressive instead of be going to. Remember how we discussed that be going to is used for events in the future that are planned? Well, we often use the present progressive that way, and we often use the present progressive instead of be going to. For instance, I'm meeting with my advisor tomorrow. This is definitely going to happen. We made an appointment. We made a plan. There's no question about it. So I can use the present progressive. Or, Denise is going to a movie with her boyfriend tonight. Again, definitely planned. No question about it, and it's in the near future. We know it's going to happen, so we can use the present progressive. Notice, however, here that when we use the present progressive, there is always some word in the sentence that indicates the future. I'm meeting with my advisor tomorrow. Denise is going to a movie with her boyfriend tonight. If you are going to use the present progressive to express an event in the future, 
then you must have some kind of future word in the sentence that tells us the time that the event is happening, so that we know from context that it's in the future. If you just said, I'm meeting with my advisor, then we would assume that that's happening right now. So if you want to indicate that I'm meeting with my advisor means in the future, then you have to say that it's in the future. You have to say tomorrow or next Tuesday or one month from now, whenever it is. You have to give us the future time. The simple present can describe events in the future that happen on a fixed schedule. There are only certain verbs that can be used in the simple present, and so you should look at the chart in your book to learn what those verbs are. For instance, Isaac's plane leaves at 4.30. When we're talking about things like transportation, planes, trains, buses, which always leave and arrive on schedules, then we can use the simple present. Because this is something that always happens. There's probably always a plane that leaves around 4.30 every Tuesday, for instance. So it's fair to say Isaac's plane leaves at 4.30. We could also say school ends May 17th. School has a fixed beginning date and ending date, so we can use the simple present. These are things that are on a schedule. Not This is more than just plans made in advance. These are things that absolutely work on a schedule. This only works, like I said, with certain verbs, so you need to refer to chart 4-4 to understand what those verbs are. The same rule is true here, though. If you are going to use the simple present to describe an event in the future, then you have to have some kind of word or phrase that indicates the future. For instance, Isaac's plane leaves at 4.30. We have to know that it's at 4.30, which is in the future, otherwise it's confusing. School ends May 17th. We have to know May 17th, which is in the future, otherwise this becomes very confusing. So it's the same as the present progressive. You must add some kind of future word or phrase so that we know that this event is going to happen in the future. For more practice, turn in your book and do exercise 15 on page 67 and 68 and exercise 19 on page 70 and 71.